What is up, Rad Potential YouTube? Welcome to today's Rad Formational video. We are going to be resurfacing some housings. We're over here at Charles' house. He does rotary cars and stuff too. You should go check out the video on restoring his truck. And we've got a plethora of housings to go through today. So, I'm rebuilding an REW engine and we're going to be resurfacing the housings from that engine. They're not the original pair. We have the original pair here, but we're not going to use both of them together. So this one, one of the ones from the engine we're going to use, super mint, no edge wear, has a small little scratch right here that definitely won't come out when we resurface it, but we'll be able to clean up a lot of the chatter marks and make these look nice. The other one we're going to use in this engine, we got used uh, from just a guy on Facebook Marketplace, and it's in really good shape, no edge wear, no scoring, and largely... When you're looking at rematching a set of housings, and someone's tried to clean this up, but we'll get all that off. When you're looking at building an engine, you want to use two housings that are largely in similar condition, um, especially if they're used and if you're not going to resurface them. Because if you have one that's more scored up, like this one, and then you have one that's really nice, you will get a big differential in compression between run road and the other, and you don't want that. For They may break in to be the same, but it's going to be really hard to start. You won't like to make it run. This housing, the Rusty Krusty one, is the matched pair from the engine I'm rebuilding. Now, we're going to resurface this one because the reason I'm not using it is because of these big gouges. And I want to show you guys in this video what resurfacing housings can and can't do. Right, So we can fix up housings that are in pretty good shape. But these big gouges, you know, this isn't like boring the cylinder of a piston engine. You don't just like take, you know, 30 thousandths off or whatever and, and put a bigger cylinder in there. You can't do that with these. So we can only really effectively hone this surface. So we're going to clean up this area right here just to check it. The next one we've got, and if you go back on the channel, you'll remember this engine. This is the half bridge port engine that went into the black right hand drive FD. And we took it apart after about 8,000 miles and the housings are in pretty rough shape. It had actually broken a side seal and a corner seal. And then we found this. So we're actually putting a whole new engine together, but this one has a lot of longitudinal scoring. My fingernail catches on it pretty well. You can hear it. So we're gonna do a section of this one just to show you that I don't know if it'll get all of that out. I don't think it will, but we might be able to improve this enough for it to be usable and we'll make that judgment after the fact. So Charles has this oscillating sander and as rudimentary as it seems, this is literally all you need. You need something that you can evenly, because this cylinder goes up and down and spins, but something you can evenly apply light pressure across the surface of the housing and largely you're just cleaning it up. You could probably accomplish something very similar with maybe a like a broom handle, you know, something cylindrical and some sandpaper and do it by hand. Um, but this, we can put some force into this cylinder and it's not going to rotate. So you won't be creating an angle on the surface, you know, as microscopic as that would be. So we're going to get started with these two and then we'll do some sections on those other ones. And then we'll talk through the results when we get done. Ready to rip. now is we're going to do an experiment we're going to see how much we can clean that up we're not going to be able to get the deep gouges out but we might be able to make it look a little bit better yeah we'll try it and see can't it, hurt to try it may not be this is the thing it, it may not be usable in an engine that's like going to be an oem whatever whatever rebuild but this housing is not damaged in the compression zone of the engine so it would still start run it would run fine you're just worried that or were you would be worried if this you were using it of catching an apex seal or something on this side where the gouges are you know that'd be the only issue or it causing excessive wear because i mean there's some pretty good gouges in it but see what resurfacing can do to the this side and we're just going to do a small section we're going to do from about how probably this hat yeah we're not going to even mess with that hat because oh this is an experiment All right, 
I mean, honestly, it, the edges aren't as sharp as they were before. There's definitely some dirt and stuff down in it now, but, you know, I wouldn't be so much worried about the apex seal catching and grabbing on that, but you'd definitely see some, I think you would see over time, this would start to grow and spread and it would chew it up. But it's getting better. You can definitely see in this one, before over here, and after over here, big difference in the uniformity between the two. So in this set we finished earlier, look at how they basically match perfectly now. I mean, there's no no discrepancy in one used housing versus another, you know? We'll get to this one here in a second. Definitely a usable housing, but I wouldn't want to use it in a customer's car. Yeah, I'd run that. In one of my junk cars. In one, in one of our junk cars, but I wouldn't put that in somebody's engine that I want to last for a while. Not that I'm great <laughs> So, trying things. Yeah. So if your housing looks this bad, you get to assume the risk or have it resurfaced. And you know, like I said, it'll probably run for a while. I mean, if you're just if you're just building a drag car or a kick the nuts out of a drift car and you just want to go rip it. Yep. I mean, why not put that it, housing it, in it? It'll, it'll be run fine. For a little while. It'll run. You know. And if you run a hard enough apex seal, it'll probably just tear the housing up. And you won't hurt the you won't hurt the apex seals or your rotors or anything so fairly low risk after a resurface here to here yes all right so don't let the camera sexiness fool you there's still it's definitely better but you can still feel the unevenness of that surface, you know. Um, but it's definitely making it much more, you know. I'm gonna change the drum back out. Much Take more usable. See what it does. You know, and I'd be curious too if you just, you know, I mean, you can hone a cylinder a pretty good bit um, to sit on and, and do this a little bit deeper. But I'd be curious if you sat on it and and really dug in what it would do. You know, you don't want to take this coating all the way off, but it is reasonably thick. That coating is what protects the housing from getting chewed up by the apex seal. You know, the apex seal is harder than this, so, or softer than this. But if that coating comes off, then it just wrecks everything. Yep. It's, once it starts coming off, it comes off everywhere. I mean, honestly, that's really not that bad. No, it's not. For how bad that was before. You can, there's a little bit of it, but yeah. it's really not in bad shape. Really, the only worry I would have is just to make sure we didn't go all the way through the chrome, the chrome and that like we've somehow fatigued the surface, you yeah. know, more than more than what it was, but honestly i mean if you did that to this whole set of housings we could probably run them again yep you know maybe a new drum and yeah because it's really, got a lot of trash on it and really get after it yep they could probably be usable i think it could be resurfaced so that's a pretty big transformation though because these housings were wasted i mean this might be the better one of the two i don't know maybe the other one's better than this but i mean that's just it had a lot of grooves in it you know and you can see the marks up in there and you can see you can still see the marks kind of where we resurface you can see down the middle you know the scoring but we've definitely lessened it and ideally right with the apex seal being softer than this that apex seal would form back into those grooves you know microscopically your peaks and valleys and and your compression would come up that's why a lot of engine builders and, and everyone will say is when you rebuild a rotary engine you know break in it's going to make more compression after three to four thousand miles than it does when you put the engine together um especially if you're using used parts so just because everything's got to bed in and, and help itself out so but anyways i i think that's pretty good i'm pretty happy with that honestly look at the size port difference in this one and that one this yeah it's been ported that one it's, been, it's been pulled down it doesn't look yep. like it's been pulled up much yep. at all 
A little bit, opening not it, much. Opening it sooner. Yeah. So. But, guys, I am amped. That's a pretty good uh, science experiment there. We figured out grooves that we can't get out of the housing. We've got the housings for the REW rebuild matched, ready to go. And then we've kind of figured out that you might be able to salvage some of the housings that, uh, that we'd consider junk. Now, this is completely independent of the chrome flaking off. I don't know if anyone has a solution for re-chroming or fixing these. I really have no idea. You know, you can start to see some of this edge wear on them. I've got ones at the house, which I'll take pictures of and put them in the video right now, that are literally have inches and whole bits of it just scraped off. RX-8s are notorious for scraping it off as well. And and that's stuff that, you know, when, when I was younger, we used to build two-stroke dirt bikes, right? And I had sent off a couple of CR125 cylinders to get re-nickel coated or nickel or whatever's the coating. I think it was to Pro Circuit in California is who did it. And they came back looking mint. I guess they coat them and then they re-hone them and then they're back to stock size. I don't exactly know. They definitely did not put sleeves in them. So I don't know if that's something that could be applicable to this. But if you're more of a scientist than me and know a lot about metallurgy, I'm, I'm in to learn. And definitely want to see if we can take some of these housings and repurpose them. So with that, guys, thank you guys very much for watching. Drop any questions in the comments below if you want to learn more about these rotary engines. Subscribe. Go check out the other videos. Mad thanks for Charles for helping out in this video. He's done carburetor videos for us, and he's got a lot of knowledge. So hopefully we're getting that to you guys. So with that, thank you. We'll see you in the next one. Keep it red. Easy oh, we got dogs over here. Oh, yeah, you got dogs. She's going to go nuts, though. Oh, yeah. What's up, doodle? Guard dog. Eleanor's more chill. Ruble. Hanging out. Peace, guys.